Let's pick it up in verse 1. Listen to the voice of Jesus Christ, your Lord, your God, and your Redeemer, whose word is quick and powerful. Some have wondered about the use of the word God when we're, when we're teaching or when we're reading the scriptures or when we're talking about uh, the gospel. When we say just God, who are the scriptures referring to? It's interesting to note that sometimes the scriptures teach it in such a way where it's very clear who they're referring to. Look at verse 1. The voice of Jesus Christ, your Lord, your God, and your Redeemer, whose word is quick and powerful. It's very clear that we're referring to Jesus Christ in all three cases here. He introduces it this way. Ironically, it's introduced through an angel who is delivering this to Joseph. So, notice how these are the words coming to Joseph from a heavenly messenger, but they're spoken in first person directly from Jesus Christ. You're going to see this throughout the Doctrine and Covenants a lot, this, this idea that we, we call divine investiture of authority. So it's this power, this ability, this right that is given to somebody to speak not just in the name of somebody else, but as if they were that somebody else. It's this is the full power of attorney, if you will. It's you can act in in my name. You you can you can represent me completely and fully. Uh, so you you get this idea here of this heavenly messenger has this divine investiture of authority to speak as if he were Jesus himself giving this message, delivering it to Joseph Smith. Uh, so you've got the, the titles, the Lord, God, and Redeemer. So back to the original question, how, how do we know, how do we keep this straight? The, the rule of thumb that I've used as I, as I go through scriptures is if it's really clear, then it's and it's obvious, in this case we're talking about Jesus Christ, that's wonderful. Other times it's very clear that it's Heavenly Father that we're talking about when it's God. And many other times the, it, it could be either one, and at that point I think we take Jesus at his word when he says, uh, when he prays to Heavenly Father that all of us may be one as they are one, that we may all become one in them. It's this idea of of whether by mine own voice or the voice of my servants that is the same, I think Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ would say the same, that it their, their words are the same, and so it's sometimes hard to tell a difference, and we could get into long debates about which one it is in some cases, and those debates probably wouldn't be very fruitful, not very productive at the end of the day because regardless of whichever one it was, it's the same message anyway, with the same intent.